Good morning. And Merry Christmas to each and all of you. Nice turnout here in person. Prayerfully, folks, online as well. It's the Sunday after Christmas. But make no mistake, the Christmas Christ is in our midst, whether you're here in person or in the midst of wherever you might be watching this online. Christ is born. Christ is with us. Christ will come again. Pastor Chip and his family are away visiting family. We wish them a wonderful visit. Safe travels, that's for sure. Flowers right on schedule. Ron and Amy Reeves timed this just as we announced this as they walked in. 59 years together of marriage. Our congratulations to you and celebrations to any and all in the midst of marriages and friendships and families and relationships. The other vase is Dick Lehman in memory of Precious Kathy, Dick is here as well with his grandson Thatcher. Kathy was a gift to God. And Jeff and Debbie Parker <laughs> celebrating that Chip, Chip is turning 21. 21. That's hard for me to believe. I look just as young as when he was born, but 21 years old. And we celebrate with them as well the arrangement on the fellowship. Looking ahead, especially to those as well online, looking ahead, this particular year of 2020, no service on New Year's Eve. That's usually a communion service. We'll wait till this whole business of the surge and all of that. So this coming, it would be Thursday night, New Year's Eve, no service. 2021, we will certainly be praying that we're back in business. But all three services next week, all three services, our usual schedule, and two of those services, 9, 15, and 10, 30, will be streamed even as this service is being streamed this morning. The poinsettias are here. Those of you in person, they're here for the taking. If you gave one, even if not, come up and take one when service is over and kind of keep your distance, but come. If you're watching online and you really like your poinsettia, call in the morning. Call in the morning in the office and let Jessica know, and we'll have a couple sitting right by the door, and you can come over and pick those up. And the same for your offering envelopes. The same for your offering envelopes that are down by the office. But if you're watching online, you can call and we'll try to get those by the door for you. And then probably in eight or ten days, we'll mail the rest of those out. Really what I want to say most of all is just a word of gratitude. To each and all who are present, but to each and all watching online. To each and all who are part of the formal membership of First English Lutheran Church. But those who come and join us online, those who worship with us as well. We've journeyed through this year. By the time we're gathered for worship again, it will be 2021. We've journeyed dealing with everything that has come. And the two pastors, I'll speak for Chip as well as myself, we're so grateful. We're grateful for hanging with us, for being with us, for your faithfulness, for your friendship, and this year for your perseverance. But I'm going to say it most of all, which I said heart and soul in the midst of my Christmas Eve sermon, for your belief, because this is real. As real as the virus, as real as the difficulties, as real as the struggles, as real as all the blessings that we have, this whole business is real. That God has come, is come, and with us always. So we'll continue to pray always that God who has guided, God who is guiding, and God who will continue to guide does that, not just for our congregation, but for each and all of us. We're so, so grateful you are here in person and grateful you are watching online. Our worship begins there on page three, a responsive invocation. Those words should show up on your screen. We stand here. We invite you to worship God together. God so loved the world. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. And his name shall be called, and here is that wonderful list. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Glory to God in the highest.
Let us pray together. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, please. Our regularly scheduled reader had to call and was not able to attend. Clyde Black pinch hits. We're grateful, Clyde. Well, good morning. morning. Your English teachers, some of them, said to you, be ready to give an impromptu speech. (laughs) We are in that time between the birth of the Messiah Jesus and what the new year brings. And so Isaiah, the prophet, speaks to that in our reading this morning. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with garland, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines forth out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be the crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks. It's a delight to read from this particular passage of Galatians because in addition to being natural parents, Carol uh, giving birth. Well, I did drive her to the hospital. Uh, We adopted two children, and this mentions adoption in Martin Luther's favorite book, Galatians. And for you and I are adopted by Christ our brother into God's family. Here are these words. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So, you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just this initial word as we finish reading the gospel. Stay standing as we finish singing the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory 
When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. seated please. Grace and mercy and peace be unto you that are present. Grace and mercy and peace be unto you watching online from the newborn Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Christ of the manger, but also the Christ of the cross, and the Christ who will bring forgiveness and salvation and redemption. Amen. When it comes to Christmas, any Christmas, when it comes to Christmas, Children know best. Children know best. Now, anybody in my generation knows there used to be a TV show called Father Knows Best. In this day and age, we have to come to admit equally, Mother Knows Best. Probably, if we're honest, maybe even Mother Knows Better. But when it comes to Christmas, children know best. They really do know best. 
Now, you've seen those commercials. I guess they're now called infomercials. They're almost like TV shows. You can watch them and not even realize that they're trying to sell you something. This particular one was just unbelievably gorgeous. The setting was incredible. Poinsettias, candles, trees, everywhere. The whole thing would just flat out knock your socks off with beauty. And the host goes out, and there's like 12, 15, 18 people who are scheduled in the audience. They're all dressed to the nines. And this little guy was even wearing a bow tie. So the host takes him up, and he speaks to this guy and says, Look at this tree. Look at this setting. What an incredible sight. Look at all the ornaments, the lights, the tinsel, the star, everything. The host said, Wow. And then he said to the little boy, So what would be your favorite part of the tree? And the little guy, speaking for children everywhere, said, what's underneath? What's underneath? The tree is nice, but I like what's underneath because I like the presence. I like the presence. When it comes to Christmas, children absolutely know best because it always comes down to the presence. As we raise our kids, we try to teach them, no, no, don't just run to the presence. Don't just run to the presence. They're just being honest. It always comes to the presence of Christmas. The Christmas presence. It's one of those canned stories. I'm certain in my many years, I've at least told it to you once and twice. A lady who's running late, running late for all the details of Christmas. We even felt that some, even with 2020 being so different, running late, like many of us, about 10 days ago, a week ago, two weeks ago, trying to get it all done. Maybe be safe, shop online, stuff is slow in arriving, baking, buying, wrapping, shopping. And last minute she thought, I really still want to mail out Christmas cards. I really still want to mail out Christmas cards. So she put on her mask and rushed to the local store and fearing the worst, fearing the worst, thinking there would none to be had. She couldn't believe it. There were two, three, four whole packets of cards with the most beautiful picture. And there were enough for her whole list. So she grabbed them and sat down at the table and addressed them and signed them and put a stamp on them and rushed them to the post office. She couldn't believe her good fortune. Two hours it was all done with such a beautiful card. She could check one more task off her list. Believe it or not, it was only on her way home that she read the inside verse. And inside this card said it this way. This little card is sent to say, a special gift is on the way. <laughs> or in her case, 53 special gifts. Probably not good news to her. Kind of good news to those 53 folks. A special gift was on the way. When it comes to Christmas, gifts, presents, it's all about it. Children knew it, know it, but so did Simeon. Simeon the devout believer of God. The Simeon story almost always shows up the Sunday after Christmas. It just makes sense. Old, well up in years, but God had revealed to him that he would not die because of his faithfulness until he had literally seen the Messiah, the Christ of the Lord. He would prayed for that, the presence, the anointed one, the incarnation of the very presence of God. And here comes Mary and Joseph. Now realize they're just doing what is customary the gospel made crystal clear. Here's what you offer. Here's what you say. This is what you do on the first board. Jewish custom, tradition, practice. You bring that newborn son to the temple. It's just what you did. And then it became far more. Then it became far more. A confession of faith that here we are 2,000 years later still reading and celebrating the faith of Simeon because he lifts up. This is the Christ. It goes from just a Jewish tradition, you present the child, until suddenly we realize from Simeon's confession, the presence of God is in our midst. Simeon's story has a matching also story, half of the story. Anna, equally devout, faithful woman of faith. A widow after seven years of marriage, lives to be 84, lives in the temple, stays there praying and fasting night and day. A tremendous it had been promised that she would also see the salvation of Israel. And she happens to be there. No, she doesn't happen to be there. They're there intentionally. And she comes with her own words of confession. 
that have to do with faithfulness and the redemption of Israel. Our gospel word today, Simeon's words, in the old days we called them the nunc dimittis. The nunc dimittis, the Latin words taken from that text in the second chapter of Luke, meaning now you can dismiss me. Now I can be dismissed. Why? Because my eyes have seen the nunc dimittis. When I was growing up, there was a part of the liturgy that was sung every single year that came back to me. Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Mine eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Simeon, in our text today, as he sees this baby Jesus, simply in the customary Jewish tradition of presenting the child, says, here's the very salvation of God. My eyes have seen it. Anna confesses it as well. This is who Jesus is. You know that. That's why you're here. You know that. That's why you're watching. You know that. We own that. In the midst of daily life that sometimes can wear us down and wear us out and get us just focusing on the wrong things, which sometimes are really good and great things, here is the very presence of the Christmas story. Children know best because it's always about the presence. The presence of our God in the baby Jesus. Christ is born. Theologically, there's not a person sitting here that doesn't know what this word means already. Perhaps almost all of you watching online. Incarnation. In the flesh. God literally dwelling with us in the flesh. It's one of my favorite illustrations. I've probably used it 20 times in 30-some years. Putting a little child to bed like many of us have done you go up, you do your prayers, you do your bedtime stories, you get a kiss goodnight. I'm going to turn out the light and shut the door. And this particular night, the child said, can you stay with me? I'm afraid. Just stay with me for a while. I'm afraid. There's no need to be afraid. What he says all the time, no need to be afraid. Whether it's mom, dad, grandma, or grandpa, there is no need to be afraid because God is with you. God is absolutely with you. I know that. The little child says, I really do. But tonight, I need someone with skin on. I need someone with skin on. The world needed someone with skin on. And at Christmas time, God sent a son. You can tell the story from memory. Born in a stable, announced by the angels, worshipped by the shepherds and the king. And the world has never been the same. Because tucked into that super familiar story is this basic message. God is with us. Incarnation. God in the person of Jesus Christ has come. Simeon wanted the parents to know who this child is. Anna, the same kind of confession. And the verses say this, his parents were amazed. His parents were amazed. Some other words about not sure what will come, a, soul, a sword will pierce your soul, takes us directly to Good Friday when at the foot of the cross, the mother of Jesus sees what's going on. But today it's simply sharing with us from Simeon's confession, Anna's confession, that Christ has come. Christ has come. If we're honest, and I don't know if they use this term anymore, and certainly with school being the way it is, I grew up with show and tell. Show and tell. The week after Christmas was always the very best week for show and tell. It took something new in. You were so proud. You got to show it and tell a little bit about it to the whole class. Simeon and Anna, far past the age of going to school, but they do the very first show and tell. The very first show and tell. As they show and tell even the parents of Jesus in the midst of just normal daily Jewish life, no, this is really what's going on. God has shown up. God has told us that the love of Christ is made real through the presence of a living God. Look what I have found, Simeon and Anna seem to say, the very Son of God. And it makes the whole world brand new. When you leave here this morning, when you finish watching and go outside, the sun makes it just feel brand new. Deeper than that is the sun that shone, the Son of God, the shining light of Jesus Christ. It is the Christmas present, the Christmas presence. Salvation is upon us, and the Messiah is with us. 
which means heart and soul, heart and soul inside out. I use that Christmas Eve night, and I like that phrase right now. Heart and soul and inside out. It means no matter what the world throws at you, the best stuff or the hardest stuff, under it all, behind it all, see it all, through it all, is the presence of our living God. It's all about the presence. It's all about the presence. Like Simeon, our eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. It's the very best present and the very best presence we can ever receive. The world will never be the same, and neither are we. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand and we sing the hymn together. Christian friends, rejoice with heart and soul and voice because Christ, born in the midst of the manger on Christmas and born to save us from our sins. Before we share the peace, which is probably the next thing showing up on your screen or watching here, uh, we share some prayers. We have some folks, even in the midst of this, going through some terribly difficult times. I may not lift them up singularly by name, but situations of grief, situations of struggling with childbirth and all of those things. So we, we lift folks up and we invite your prayers as well from your hearts and those of you online. Let us pray. Good Christian friends, indeed rejoice, O Lord, because you fill us with the absolute certainty that you share life with us. And tons of that life in the midst of Christmas week, Christmas Day, the Sunday after Christmas, is filled with joyful celebration, with family and friends, with people of God, maybe at a distance this year, but with FaceTime, and time online, phone calls, or simply thinking of one another. It is a joyful, joyful, heartfelt time of year. And yet we all know that underneath all that heartfelt time are things that occur that our hearts. That's how human life is, the ups and downs. So we treasure the joys and we pray for folks as they walk through the valley. We lift up especially some folks dealing with concerns of newborn births. Surround that family, bless that family, watch over that family, hold that family. We pray for folks dealing with the reality of grief. That grief may be brand new. That grief may go back years. But in the season of Christmas, oftentimes, we truly remember precious lives that live 
already in the precious promise of the gift of heaven. We pray for concerns of finance, stress and strain, job, for the worries about schooling and education, for the worries about divisiveness, meanness, and we pray into every single part of that. May the light of Christ shine. May the promise that Simeon and Anna made and confessed about who Christ is be with us. When life just threatens to overwhelm us, and sometimes it just really does, may we see always underneath, no matter where we sink, that you hold us, that you sustain us, that you bless us, and there is absolutely nothing that can overcome us. Gracious God, we pray for your strength, your peace, and your power. And yet we also pray in gratitude for blessings that abound, for people who like us and love us, for people who we like and love, for family and friends. And while every degree of family and friends isn't always a perfect relationship, what a joy to have someone we call a friend. And what a gift to have people we call family. For simply the privilege of being in worship, watching online, for the sun that shines, and for the gift of another day, we give thanks. So indeed, Lord, the very Christmas presence of your Son, Jesus, allows us to pray for our concerns and allows us to pray in thanksgiving for our joys. We do all of that in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Right there at the top of page 9, if you're present or perhaps on your screen, the peace of the Lord be with you always. We're starting to get the hang of this. I know we wish we could hug and do all that, but share, please, God's peace with one another, with you online. Peace, Pastor Chip. God's peace be with you. Well, there's that famous organ player from the South. God's peace. Peace of the Lord be with each and all, with each and all. We're thankful for your presence here. We're thankful for your presence online. Mostly we're thankful for the presence of the living Christ. These offering prayers have been in our folder since March when we first went without being present in church and now be present in church with streaming, reminding us to say thank you for your support, thank you for your stewardship but also reminding us that everything we offer, including a gift of an offering, is simply an act of worship. I invite you as we pray together, let us pray. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Give us the Christmas faith so that we welcome your birth and proclaim your purse, peace revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. We share together responsively our sending litany. The child is born, alleluia. Let the whole earth rejoice. Alleluia. Our God is now here. Go into the world to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry. Alleluia, our God is now here. We cry out with the angels and the and the shepherds of the fields. Alleluia, our God is now here. Amen. As we depart today, we leave with that thought. Alleluia, our God is now here. And amen. Thanks be to God. Yes, indeed, that is the truth. May Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, 
who proclaimed joy through the angels, who sent the shepherd with good news, who led the magi by a star. Bless you this day through the word made flesh. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, a reminder that you are absolutely invited to take a poinsettia. No New Year's Eve service, but a week from today, 8 o'clock, 9, 15, 10, 30. Go in Christmas joy. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 